Last year at this meeting uh, was the first time that we presented any data on Oyster Point Pharma, and I'm excited to say that here we are a venture-backed company, recently closed a $93 million financing in February of this year, and we're transitioning with our lead asset into phase three development. We talked a lot about dry eye disease and the unmet need and excited to see all of the innovation because we think we need to add to the armamentarium available to the physicians in treating this disease. We really think that we deliver a novel and disruptive approach to treating dry eye. Rather than focusing on the patients that are in the cycle of dry eye where we have irritation and inflammation, we feel that by addressing the loss of tear film homeostasis earlier in the disease continuum, we can stop patients from getting into that cycle. And then for those patients that are in the cycle of dry eye disease, we hope to be able to break that cycle. Artificial tears versus natural tears, most in the room knows that there's a stark difference. And uh, we are stimulating not only uh, tear film that contains mybum, uh, mucins, and the proteinaceous and aqueous components of the tear film, but it lasts on the ocular surface and provides a benefit to the cornea. What many don't know is that uh, tear film, basal tear film, is produced, about 34% of our basal tear film uh, is produced through inhalation of air across the nasal mucosa. So if those of us in the room that have had uh, severe or chronic sinusitis, you know when you wake up in the morning and you have that dry eye uh, type experience, it's because we're not stimulating those trigeminal pathway in the nasal cavity. We are developing a novel molecule uh, to be delivered as a nasal spray. This comes from a class of drugs called nicotinic acetylcholine receptor agonists. These have been studied for over three decades, primarily in the CNS space. So we have a lot of experience, a lot of literature around the molecules. We deliver this molecule as a preservative-free nasal spray at a very low volume. 50 microliters is delivered uh, into the right and left side of the nasal passage. And one of the nice things about this product is unlike conventional nasal sprays where we're trying to deliver it to the sinus cavity, here we're stimulating nerve fibers that are on the inferior turbinates. This is, here's a video of a patient uh, taking the nasal spray. It's delivered bilaterally because the pathways cross over. These drugs bind to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors located on the trigeminal nerve. These are ligand-gated ion channels which allow calcium influx and depolarization. We get a synapse in the central nervous system that ultimately stimulates the lacrimal functional unit. So we get stimulation of lacrimal glands, meibomian glands, and goblet cells on the surface of the conjunctiva, really forming a stable tear that allows for the patients to have symptomatic improvement, not only over a chronic period of time, but I'm gonna show you just how fast this product works. When we look in real-time delivery uh, of the nasal spray, if we watch the lower lid margin, you'll see that within 10 to 15 seconds after delivery of the product, the patient will form their own natural tear film. We can do this in a dose-dependent manner, um, and I'm gonna show you the clinical data that supports uh, what you're seeing here in the video. In 2018, we completed a phase 2B study called the Onset 1 study. This was a dose-ranging study looking at a high, medium, and low dose versus placebo-controlled. Our pre-specified endpoint uh, for sign was Schirmer's score at day 28. Uh, and then our pre-specified symptom endpoints, we actually had two uh, both inside and outside of the controlled adverse environment chamber. Primary endpoint you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen was uh, mean change from baseline and Schirmer score, you'll see that we achieved statistically significant improvement at all doses. And on the right-hand side, you'll see the categorical endpoint of those patients gaining greater than 10 millimeters or more on Schirmer score. And again, you'll see a very robust and st statistically significant improvement. From the standpoint of uh, symptoms. On the left-hand side, I think one of the most important graphs we often get asked, how long is the effect and how durable? On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see these patients did not receive their morning dose of drugs, so the last dose they had was the evening before. You can still see that we have statistically significant symptom reduction. And on the right-hand side, you'll see at week four, also statistically significant symptom reduction, although the magnitude of the effect is greater with continued therapy. 
sorry, we skipped over the graph there, but one of the important things that goes along with uh, the video here is the data, uh, if you look at the, the graph to the left-hand side, you'll see that we are one of the few products out there that can show statistically significant reduction in symptoms in patients as quick as five minutes after delivery, and we think this will be important uh, for acceptance of this product in the clinic. From a safety perspective, the most common adverse event that we see is a patient may sneeze upon installation. These are mild and transient, but I think what's important with this therapy is it spares the ocular surface. So nothing's delivered to the ocular surface. It's an odorless and tasteless drug, um, and obviously uh, we feel really comfortable with the safety profile. I'm excited to say that we'll begin phase three clinical development in the summer of this year with a very similar design, looking at the medium and high dose from the last study. And our endpoints are very similar to what we did in phase 2B. Market research has been very favorable for a product that's delivered through another route, as well as this novel mechanism of action. So just in summary, we think that this is a product that could treat a very large market uh, very innovative through mechanism of action as well as route of administration. And in a short year since we last presented our data, we're in phase three development with a high likelihood of clinical regulatory success. Thank you. Thank you.